Hall of Famers Julius Irving and Isaiah Thomas recently said that Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is the best NBA player ever, and not Michael Jordan or LeBron James. Many people agree with them, because Kareem has arguably the greatest resume in NBA history, and had the most unguardable offensive move ever. Here's a retrospect of Kareem's storied career, where we'll try to answer, is he really the basketball goat? Early Playing Career Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was born as Lou Alcindor in 1947 in New York. He was an introverted kid who loved books and music. But basketball became a logical choice because he was by far the tallest kid of his generation. At the age of 13, Alcindor was already dunking, which turned him into a known guy in all five boroughs. He enrolled at Power Memorial High School and led his teams to 95 wins in 101 games and three state championships. At that point, he became a star on the national level and the number one recruit in the country. Then he opted to go to UCLA and play under coach John Wooden, where he continued to dominate. In college, Alcindor broke numerous records and won the NCAA title in each of his three playing seasons with UCLA, with two National Player of the Year awards. Bruins won 88 out of 90 games with Alcindor in the lineup, and to date, he is the only athlete to be named the NCAA tournament's most outstanding player three times. When the 1969 draft arrived, two franchises that were in the 2021 NBA Finals were in contention for the top pick in the draft. And just like the most recent finals, the Bucks triumphed over the Suns, winning the first pick due to a lucky toss of the coin, and then selected Alcindor first overall. However, the NBA wasn't the only option for a player like Lou Alcindor. The Harlem Globetrotters offered him a million dollars to sign with them, and he was also drafted by the New York Nets in the ABA League, who offered him twice as much money as the Bucks. But Alcindor opted for the NBA. Dominance from the start when he came to the pros, Alcindor was listed at 7'2 and weighed a lean 225 pounds, far less than other centers. Up to that point, big guys could dominate the game by sheer strength, but Alcindor had the upper hand due to unprecedented agility and coordination. His nimble footwork resulted from a strict training regimen and hours of work in the post. Combined with the devastating skyhook, a shot he could perform ambidextrously, Alcindor was borderline unstoppable. Kareem started practicing the hook shot when he was in fifth grade because he often played with older and much stronger kids, and it was the only shot he could always get off. In college, he wasn't allowed to dunk, because the NCAA prohibited dunking from 1967 until 1976, forcing Kareem to use the hook shot even more. When he got to the NBA, Kareem was finally allowed to dunk, but his hook shot was now so polished that he didn't even need to dunk to score. With almost an 8-foot wingspan on top of his 7-foot-2 frame, Kareem's release point on his hook shots was so high that it looked like it dropped from the sky, and one game announced dubbed it the Skyhook. Other than Wilt Chamberlain, nobody ever blocked Kareem's Skyhook, which makes it arguably the most devastating offensive weapon in basketball history. Alcindor dominantly won Rookie of the Year in 1970, and with an average of 28.8 points, he was the league's second top scorer and third best rebounder with 14.5 boards. The Bucks rose from a 27-55 record in the previous season to 56-26, a 29-win improvement. In his second season, the Bucks added Oscar Robertson, who was at the back end of his prime. With Alcindor and Big O, Milwaukee won the league-leading 66 games, and Alcindor won the MVP award with an average of 32 points and 16 rebounds. They crushed the opposition in the playoffs, going 12-2 overall and sweeping the bullets in the finals, with Alcindor winning the finals MVP. After the finals, he officially changed his name to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, which means noble, powerful servant. The Bucks continued to hammer through the regular season in the next three seasons, clinching the number one seed each time, with Jabbar winning two more regular season MVPs. However, they only reached the finals once more in 1974, which they lost to the Celtics in seven games. Oscar Robertson retired after that, and Kareem missed 17 games of the 1975 season due to a scratched cornea, after which he was forced to wear goggles in games, which became his trademark look. Without Big O, and with Kareem missing games, the Bucks found themselves out of the playoffs, and they would soon be without a star. Kareem was never quite happy in Milwaukee, and due to the lack of people who shared his religious and cultural beliefs, he demanded a trade, either to his hometown Knicks or the LA Lakers. The Lakers won the Jabbar sweepstakes, which meant that Kareem was going back to Cali. Early Struggles in LA Kareem helped the Lakers win 10 games more than the year before. 
but it still wasn't good enough to make the playoffs. However, it was good enough for him to win another league MVP with a monstrous stat line of 28 points, 17 rebounds, 5 assists, and league-leading 4 blocks per game. Next season, Kareem was named Most Valuable Player for the fifth time in eight years, tying Bill Russell's record. But despite his individual brilliance, the Lakers didn't make it far in the playoffs. It wasn't until 1979 and the arrival of Magic Johnson that things finally fell into place. Rejuvenated, Kareem had 25 points and 11 rebounds on average and was named the MVP of the season, his record-breaking sixth MVP award, a record that still stands today. The Lakers finished the regular season with the best record in the conference and proceeded to their first NBA Finals since 1973. There, they would collide with Dr. J and his Philadelphia 76ers in a stacked Finals matchup that featured seven future Hall of Famers. The series was tied at two games apiece, and in the fifth game, Kareem proved that he's the best player in the world, even with just one good leg. Jabbar rolled his ankle badly in the third quarter, and he came back limping in the fourth. But despite being badly hurt, Kareem poured in 14 points until the end, finishing with 40 points and 15 rebounds, and pushing the Lakers to a 3-2 series lead. He was averaging 33 and 17 for the series, with almost five blocks, and it was a terrible loss for the Lakers when his ankle forced him out of Game 6. Kareem didn't even fly to Philly, hoping to heal for Game 7 on the home floor, but it turned out it wasn't necessary. Starting at center, Magic played the best game of his life, scoring 42 points and grabbing 15 rebounds to clinch the title for the Lakers. Showtime Dynasty by the time he won his first title with the Lakers in 1980, Jabbar was 33 years old. He had won six MVPs, two scoring titles, and was a four-time blocks leader. He made the All-NBA and the All-Defensive team every season, and up to that point, he averaged 28 points, 15 rebounds, 4.5 assists, and 3.5 blocks per game. In short, he was the best player in the game for over a decade. But when everybody believed he would slow down a bit, Kareem continued to prove them wrong. His only signs of aging was the thinning hair. Because on the court, Jabbar continued to dominate, averaging at least 20 points for the next six seasons. He remained in remarkable shape, and even in his late 30s, he was trim, muscular, and able to play over 30 minutes per game, at an age which the vast majority of players would already retire. Jabbar started practicing yoga and mixed martial arts in the late 70s to improve his flexibility, and he swears that it was the key reason for extending his career. During the 80s, Jabbar and the Lakers appeared in the finals every year except 1981 and 1986, when they lost in the conference finals. Led by Magic, Jabbar, and later James Worthy, and coached by the legendary Pat Riley, Los Angeles played the most attractive basketball in the world. And because they brought the show every night with flashy moves and swift pace, they got nicknamed the Showtime. The Lakers won another title in 1982, again defeating the 70 Sixers, but Philly returned the favor next year with Moses Malone and his famous foe, foe, foe. Los Angeles lost in the finals in 1984, too, this time against the Celtics in seven games. In 1985, the Lakers played Boston in the finals once more, and they lost game one with the score of 148 to 114. And that game will forever be remembered as the Memorial Day Massacre. The Lakers got humiliated, and it seemed like they couldn't win another title with Jabbar, who was 38 at the time and who played poorly in game one. But just when everybody wrote him off, Kareem played the best basketball one 38-year-old ever played. The man who was considered to be chopped liver two days earlier had run the floor like a 20-year-old and dominated with 30 points, 17 rebounds, 8 assists, and 3 blocks. It was probably Kareem's best game wearing purple and gold. The Lakers would win the game 109-102, and they'd managed to close out the Celtics in 6. Kareem averaged 25, 9, and 5 for the series and was deservedly named the Finals MVP. 14 15 years after winning the Finals MVP with the Bucks, he's still the oldest player with that accomplishment. The Lakers made the Finals in each of Kareem's last three seasons. In 1987, they defeated the Celtics, and the 40-year-old Kareem was still highly productive, averaging 22 points and 7 rebounds. Jabbar won his sixth title in 1988 against the Pistons, who then avenged that loss in the 89 Finals. Father Time then finally caught up with Kareem, who was 42 years old at the time of his retirement. Legacy. When Kareem Abdul-Jabbar left the game in 1989, no NBA player had ever scored more points, blocked more shots, won more Most Valuable Player awards, played in more All-Star games, or logged more seasons. Only Bill Russell and his teammates on the 1960s Celtics had won more on a team level, but nobody accomplished more than him individually. That was true in 1989 when he retired, and is still true now. Yes, Jordan has won more scoring titles and more final MVPs, and yes, LeBron has broken a few records 
records of his own. But even with all of their trophies and accolades, Kareem is still the most successful player ever. He won a championship every year in high school and every year in college, plus six more in the NBA. He's still the all-time scoring leader with over 38,387 points. And if the NBA counted block shots in the first four seasons of his career, he would still be the all-time leader in blocks as well. When Kareem was asked if he was better than Jordan, he said this, Historically speaking, I'm underrated. I'm not better than Jordan, but I was at least as effective as he was. Kareem was brutally efficient with 56% career shooting from the field and super effective on both ends of the court. Even at the age of 40, he was also a natural leader and one of the most prominent activists for human rights in NBA history. Kareem was consistently great for 30 years, on and off the court, and that's why his name has to be mentioned in every GOAT conversation.